here with Pastor Michael. Uh, Pastor Michael is from Hong Kong. He's a, a mechanical engineer from the Hong Kong University, and he graduated from the Hong Kong Overseas Bible Seminary. And he also attended uh, seminary school at the China Evangelical Seminary in Taiwan and Wheaton Graduate School of Theology in the U.S. And he received his Doctor of Ministry from Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, Reverend Zheng has served in many places, including a missionary in the Philippines. He also pastored churches in Austin, Texas, and Chicago. Um, in 2002, he became the senior pastor of North York Chinese Baptist Church in Toronto. And that's uh, where Pastor Zheng has been living. Uh, he's now preaching to us from Toronto. Um, about seven years ago, he retired as a church pastor um, and then he's now serving as the director of development of the Sagos Institute of Preaching and Bible Exposition. So without further delay, uh, I'm going to give the time now to Pastor Zhang. Uh, Harrieto, Pastor Zhang has the sharing rights, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen. Okay. Yeah, and do you mind flipping to the next slide because that is the... Oh, that's the verse. Okay. All right. The verse yeah. Yes. Worship PowerPoint. Okay. You want to read the verse first. Okay. You, you can share your verse. I didn't type it out. Oh, okay. Um, Harrieto, can you share screen again? Because that verse is on the worship PowerPoint. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. Okay. There you are. Shall I read the verse? Pastor? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so this is from Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So I'm going to, uh, Henrietta, thank you for switching to sharing rights for Pastor Zhang. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Rebecca, for your introduction. Uh, uh, I, I need to uh, uh, explain something. Uh, I almost could have got the, my engineering degree from Hong Kong University, but it was the God's grace and uh, his calling that uh, I, I quit my study <laughs> with one year left. So I didn't get the degree, but uh, God has called me to be an engineer for the human heart. <laughs> and I was able to by God's grace, help many people to come to know God and uh, build his church. So thank God for that. And I'm no longer the director of development of Sagos Institute because, you know, at this uh, time of uh, uh, lockdown, uh, they don't have any uh, uh, physical uh, attendance. So no student, all, all students are online. So I actually, I just, uh, I'm in Toronto since last uh, March, uh, I mean, 2020. So I, I, uh, I stay here and now I am uh, still uh, helping the Canada Seagulls uh, as uh, uh, their uh, special uh, lecturer. Anyway, I also taught, uh, teach uh, at the Seagulls Institute uh, of US. Anyway, thank you, um, Rebecca, for your uh, invitation, and I'm glad to see you all again. Uh, and uh, happy Independence Day, especially today, July 4th. Uh, we should be thankful for the many good things we enjoy here in America, right? We, are, we must thank God for this beautiful uh, country and the freedom we enjoy. Uh, however, we all know there are many things not going well in recent years, uh, as Dr. Thomas Wang had repeatedly appealed to us before. What did he say? America, return to God. Our nation, 
needs to repent. So we must pray for revival that America will return to be a God-feeling nation and a channel of blessings to the world. America needs to go back to her spiritual vitality, which characterized her founding more than 200 years ago. Anyway, today I would like to speak on a topic related to our responsibility regarding this revival. You know, when we speak, we often use symbols or images to describe things. You may compliment a lady describing her as a flower, right? Or you may label someone as strong as a rock or a fortress. The Bible also has a lot of images. Uh, Yale Theological Seminary professor, uh, Dr. Paul uh, Minia said uh, that uh, in his book, uh, uh, the New Testament has at least 96 images for the church, like the salt of the world, the light of the world, the letter of Christ, the branches of the wine, the unleavened bread, the olive tree, the bride of Christ, the holy temple, etc., etc. In Matthew 5, Jesus told his, his disciples, you are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. What did he mean? In the time of Jesus, both salt and light were daily necessities of the Jewish family. Salt is used for seasoning. Before we had uh, refrigeration, salt was also used to preserve food and or disinfection. Jesus must have seen Mary use salt on fish or meat. And Mary would also light a lamp when night comes. And when people go out, they would hold a lamp to light up the road. Otherwise, they may go the wrong way or fall into a pit, right? So when Jesus heard these two images, they immediately understand what Jesus meant. Because in this Sermon of the Mount, Jesus began with the Beatitudes, which told us the character of the people of the kingdom of heaven. So those who enter the kingdom of God have a special kind of character, and they are also blessed in many ways. And then Jesus said the disciples are the salt and the light of the world, which means they are not blessed solely for themselves. God gave them a call to be a blessing to all mankind. In the 21st century, these two images are still appropriate because every day, we need salt and we need night. Both are very important. How should we be the salt and light of the world in our time so that we can be a blessing to all people? So this morning, I want to share with you three things from this uh, the scripture we read, okay? Firstly, God calls us to be different. You know, the nature of Christians should be different from the world. Both salt and light have their essence or specific nature, and they must maintain their essence to be effective. If the salt loses its flavor, it is useless. So it, it, it will be good for nothing. It will be trampled underfoot. If light does not give out light or even goes out, then it's useless. When the Lord Jesus told his disciples that they are the salt of the world and that they are the light of the world, he was saying, since you are different from the world in nature, you must live a life different from that of the world. And in Matthew 5, in the following paragraph, Jesus said, you heard the ancients command 
not to kill or murder, not to commit adultery, and not to swear, etc. But let me tell you, not only that you do you cannot do those things, you just can't hate people. You can't lust. And you can't lie. Why? Because of nature of the disciples. The standard is much higher than that of the world. Their heart has been renewed and the behavior should also change. In chapter uh, six, Jesus said, the disciple must not imitate what the Gentiles did. No hypocrisy like the Pharisees did. So it's clear that the disciples have to be different from the world. You know, when, G when God saves the Israelites out of Egypt, what did he require from them? In Leviticus 18, verse three to five, he says, you must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws. For the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. So why can't the Israelites do what the Egyptians and the Canaanites do? Because God said, I am the Lord your God. So they are now God's people. They are his servant, actually. God is holy, and they must be holy, too. So they must be different from the world. And what is the standard? Where comes the standard? God said, you must obey my laws and follow my decrees. Okay, those are the standards. For the person who obeys them will live by them. That is true life. Real life is living out God's word. So the duty of the Israelites is to live according to the way of God, which is different from the Gentiles. So sad that the Israelites failed. They did not obey God. So they have to be disciplined. And um, so in Jesus' time, he come to intervene in the world, and he brings in again the true gospel, which that people need to be connected to God and rely on God and obey him. To be different from the world today, we must act according to God's word. Back in March uh, this year, just about four months ago, Kowi Center, uh, the, uh, the Chinese uh, Christian Coordination Center of World Evangelism, of which Dr. Thomas Wang was the first general secretary. Uh, they held a lecture uh, entitled uh, Leading Lessons exploring the two-sided life of leaders. Uh, and it was mentioned in this, in this workshop that in recent years, Christian circ um, uh, among Christian circles from Western churches to Eastern churches, um, they have experienced frequent spiritual crisis. Many famous leaders fail. These co-workers violated the truth of the Bible and even violated the law of the land in their life, character, and moral integrity. And the speaker mentioned the scandal of Ravi Zacharias. I think some of you might have heard about that. He was a famous, very famous Christian apologist who passed away last year. And after the meeting, uh, I mean, the, the Zoom meeting I heard online, I found out from the internet 
that for more than 10 years, Rabbi Zacharias used his reputation as a very non Christian apologist to sexually assault many massage therapists in the United States and overseas. And then the mission organization founded by him and led by his family members and loyal allies failed to hold him accountable. And this famous speaker, whom I had always admired and listened to many times, turned out to be a double-faced person. You ask, what is a double-faced person? This is a double-faced person. You know, she can be beautiful at one time, but very ugly another time. It's double face. And also, more correctly, this person's front image is different from his back. His back was totally different. Behind, he has always been malicious. So there's a problem with the essence the essence was bad. You know the problem of many Christians? They are very religious on Sundays in the church, yet without any Christian behavior, characteristics on the other weekdays. So they are no different from the world. Today, the devil uses heresy, false doctrines and perverted this principle to confuse people in the world. There are so many new theories coming up to lure people into sin and get people caught in a snare. What used to be considered a sin and in violation of ethics and moralities, now people use human rights, freedom, and even civil rights as excuse to commit. So today, the world not only have a pandemic of COVID, but also I would say we're in a pandemic of pornography. We're in a pandemic of deception. You know, there's so many things deceiving people nowadays, especially online. So many hackers there. Right, you have to really have to pay real careful attention when you use a computer, when you get email. Don't don't open those websites. Uh, it's a pity that some churches have compromised in their beliefs, and their moral standard have also degraded, so different from the rest of the world and on no different, I would say no different from the rest of the world. So will you do something? Because many people say it doesn't matter. And some Christians are even doing it. So many people support abortion, divorce, and same-sex marriage, so forth. Would you agree? Or drugs, would you agree? You must think first. What does the word of God say? What is the standard according to God's word? When I was pastoring uh, the church of Cebu in the Philippines, that was several decades ago, a sister in our church who was married for almost 10 years was infertile. Once she went to Thailand with, the, with her friends on a tour, I mean, they came to a temple uh, of uh, Irawan Buddha. Uh, you know, Thailand is famous for the so-called four-faced Brahma, or four-faced Buddha, same in Fatna. Every member of the group went in. And her friend said, you are not pregnant. Why don't you go inside and pray for the Iran, uh, Irawan Buddha to manifest his power, and then you can conceive. The sister he responded immediately, I am a Christian. I know whom I believe in. She would not go in to worship the four-faced Buddha. So when she came back from the trip, 
she became pregnant. Very, very wonderful. She gave birth to a son, very healthy boy. And in the next year, she gave birth to, to a daughter. They, grew, they both grew up serving God fervently in the church. Uh, several years back uh, ago, my, uh, my church uh, celebrated her 100th anniversary and they invited me to go back. They have a 100 member choir. <laughs> wow, it's so, they, they sang so well. And you know, who wrote the, the hymn, the 100 year uh, commemorate hymn that was the son of the, do the, the daughter I mentioned. And who's the pianist? That's her daughter. So there's my, my sister's two children whom God gave her and she, she raised them up in the fear and in the knowledge of the Lord to become very fervent Christian. I was so, so thrilled and comforted, encouraged by, by these two young, young people. And also our sister really showed to the world she is different in nature and God vindicated her. Today we have to reflect, do we listen to God's word or do we listen to the, 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 the voice of the world? Do we listen to God's word, but act as you so? Do, will you live out God's will and not conform to that of the world? So the first meaning of being salt and light is that God calls us to be different from the world. Okay, now the second thing, God calls us to go to the world. Let me ask you, will you buy 10 cans of salt and only put them in the living room cabinet for exhibition? No. Will the salt work? work? in the jar, inside the jar or bottle. No, it must be poured out in order to work. It must be placed in the meat and sip into the soup. Then it will be effective. Have you ever put a lamb under the bucket or under the bed? Jesus said, you, you won't do that. No way, it's useless. The light must be lifted up high, the use of the light is in the ceiling, right? Or on high places to shine in front of people, you know, to illuminate the surroundings and guide the way forward. Therefore, if you want to be effective as salt and light, you cannot be separated from the world. There are many programs and activities in many churches today, but they are all inward driven, only for their own people for maintain, main, maintenance sick, for maintenance sick, and seldom care about the needs of outsiders. There's a very famous uh, scholar, a, a, a pastor, Dr. Billy Hanks Jr. He once heard a British preacher saying, Christians in North America, please listen carefully. Your magnificent church will be like a British cathedral in 25 to 50 years. It will become empty unless you change the method of evangelism. And that experience gave Billy Hank a vision to devote himself to help people multiply in spiritual growth. So uh, uh, he, 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 he has a conviction, a conviction that the people learns from and outdoes his teacher. So he has a program called Ching Chat Yula. Okay. And then, and then he helped people to grow, to impact others. But look at this statement by Hanks quoting the British preacher. Did the British preacher's word was the preacher? British preacher's word fulfilled? Yes, it has been fulfilled in many churches. 
if you go to Europe, there are many big cathedrals empty. And in America now, same. Some big churches were sold to the Muslim, to the Buddhist, Buddhist, and turned to, turned to a temple. It's so sad. And in Toronto too. So, but, you know, according to Dr. Brad Kallenberg, who is a professor of religious studies at Dayton University, he said, in the 1970s, when preaching the gospel, 10% of people were convicted. In 1985, despite double efforts, only six to 7% were convicted. The percentage ratio is even lower today. Why? Because postmodern people have undergone great changes in society, in culture, in morals, in values and family. They do not accept the notion of the existence of the true God. They doubt the object objectivity of history. They, they doubt the absurdness of morality and also the possibility of miracles. So when you preach, to, preach the gospel today to people, do you feel that the front door of human heart is tightly closed? It's so hard to get into people's from the front door. So how can you impact people? And then I saw another study, a recent study. He said, whether in society uh, or even church today, among 100 adults, about 53 are psychologically unhealthy. And then 24 have depressions. And then 18 have anxiety. And then 29 have low self-esteem. And 51 have relationships dissatisfied. So many people need to take sleeping pills to, for the insomnia. Uh, and still they can sleep, some people can sleep. So in fact, what is the mental condition of postmodern people? They are full of trauma, broken relationships, a lot of stress and so anxiety, emotional disorders, feeling of, this, uh, of abandonment and rejection. And they feel so pessimistic, no hope for the future. And they long for belonging. They need to find community. You heard about that, right? So today we are we know we are facing a dual pandemic, not only pandemic of the coronavirus, but also the pandemic of mental health. So uh, although, that, what does it mean? Although the front door is closed, people's front door is closed, their back door is actually open because they have need inside. So, so, what's the way to enter the crowd? Go through the back door. Try the back door. So how do you go through the back door? Well, just think about how you use the salt. How to put it in the meat uh, uh, and, and sprinkle it in the soup. You don't give a big spoon, big scoop. You just put a little and a little, right? <laughs> Try a little. And you see the taste is changing, but too much is unacceptable. How do you give light to people? Will you use X-ray? Will you use laser beam, strong beams? No, you begin uh, with a soft light, like the morning light, and it will enter, slowly enter people's heart. You said, is this perfect cold? Well, just go back to Matthew 5, 16. It says, Jesus said in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. Jesus emphasized, you see, on the good deeds, you not just giving them the, the, the word of the gospel, 
you give them the gospel living out through your life. And also it emphasizes you have to be in contact with people. So you must have good attitude, good behavior. And this is a way of the back door. And then if you look at Colossians 4, this is another, another uh, uh, passage that mentioned about the salt. He said, be wise in the way you act toward others. Outsiders make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You notice that Paul was writing the book of Colossians from the prison in Rome, right? He, he was without freedom, but Paul was so thrilled by the word of God. He's a Jesus abundance and he, he could still, uh, he was still very energetic, eager to spread the gospel. He asked people to pray for him so that he can have the courage to preach the gospel to the Roman soldiers in the prison. But he also encouraged the Christian outside to be fervent by reaching out to others. And he used this, this uh, uh, the symbol of the salt. But firstly, he said people must, must be wise in the way how to contact outsiders, make the most of every opportunity. Don't lose the opportunity that God gave you, the connection that you can have and let your conversation be always full of grace. That means you need to have, you, you, you have a good manner and a caring attitude, sacrificial and season with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. How can you answer people without first listening to them, right? When Paul say answer, that means he's supposing you have to listen to people. Today, many problem that we have relation with people is because we don't listen. And you just want to say what you like, that's not the right way. You have to listen to their need to their pain, to their feeling. And then you speak to them, you share with them, like uh, um, season with salt. That means you have to speak with persuasion. You have to speak interestingly, and you have to speak relevantly. Many churches are now beginning to focus on one of the characteristics of uh, natural church development, especially on evangelism. It's called need-based evangelism. Uh, that means they want to reach out people by meeting the needs of people first, uh, meeting their family need so they will know their new real need. You go, through your, go, you go through their real need by first serving their, meeting their family. So what are some of the families? Parent child seminar, how to teach your kids, right? Especially in our age. Wow, that's very bad outside in the public school, right? And uh, well, you can, some people sound new, new immigrants, they, they need to learn English, right? They need to be careful. And some churches use tutoring class for the young, for the children, young people, and even teach. Uh, parent-child relationship, and, and so uh, uh, there are all kinds of community service, services that you can use to, to make contact with people. So we can make friends with unbelievers to gain their trust, and then you can share the gospel with them. Uh, so you may ask, now we are since we are in this pandemic we yeah, we are getting more open but uh, still hard to have many community service well you know uh god's works amazing now all churches have an online services many christians and non-christians now become familiar with online meetings zoom meeting right or even uh 
know how to use their their uh, cell phone, uh, uh, the apps on the cell phone. So, so they are now familiar with all those apps. So you can make use of this channel to to go to people's uh, meet with people from the back door. Uh, I know recently that uh, actually in your place in the Bay Area, there are some. There's a few uh, a, a few uh, Christians uh, uh, who who are very fervent for the gospel. They started this Chinese Today radio, and uh, it's a program trying to reach out to uh, the non-Christian. Also, they serve the Christians. Uh, they they can reach to the to the all of uh, North America. So uh, actually, several weeks ago, I heard the program, one program in Cantonese. They also have in Mandarin. Uh, I heard um, Dr. Ambrose Hong, who gave a health talk uh, with more than 500 people attending. And last night, they, they, she has, here's another program. They now even use a YouTube and you can listen through YouTube. Uh, so they have, uh, seminar on the health talk and also treatment on insomnia, on self-defense. You know, we Asians are sometimes uh, beaten on the street <laughs> without reason. You know, they, they, it's really a hate crime, but, but he, he teach you how to do self-defense. And uh, they also provide some anti-epidemic uh, drinks, you know, those Chinese drinks, okay. so. So if you, you want to copy down, you can, you, you just type K-E-S-T-A-M-1450. It's actually your, your radio there in San Francisco, right? Uh, and you can look at this Gamyat, Beigo Gamyat Wai and Din Toy. And you can see, uh, you can hear these uh, talks. Uh, so actually you can use this way to go to walk through the back door in people's life. You just care for them and that they, they, they would want to listen more to you when you want to share the gospel. Someone heard that her friend's sister cannot believe in the Lord. So she asked, did you invite her to the church? Yes, but my sister refused to come. However, I heard someone say, don't bring them to the church bring the church to them. You understand this? You understand what this means? So this is to say, I am working hard to trying to bring the church to them, to my sister. So this is a strategy of the sword and night. We have to penetrate the world. We cannot lock ourselves in the four walls of the church. We have to go outside, penetrate the world. So, be a church, be a Christian outside the soul shaker and be a Christian on the lamb stand. Many people say after believing in the Lord, all my friends are in the church. I have no outside friends. Would you agree? Is this your situation? Well, you have to, we all actually live in the crowd every day. When you go to the grocery store, right? You should open up when you go, you walk on the street, there are people outside. They are neighbors, they are co-workers. So the important thing is how you interact with people. Do you only have superficial, a superficial conversation with them? Are you just talking about your own needs? Are you asking them questions? Oh, what's the weather? Uh, how much is the cost? What's the time? Would you like to say more words to express your concern for people? Are you willing to listen to their inner conditions? Are you willing to establish a genuine relationship with them? So how to be the soul in life the world? Remember God's call for us to be in the world, do not like the world. Okay, the third thing I want to share with you is God calls us to influence the world. 
You know, as soon as salt comes into contact with food, what will happen? It has an influence. Salt brings out the good taste. It kills bacteria. It melts the ice and snow, even. When it, when it put on the pork for a long time, it turned the pork into ham. Ah, you can have a Similarly, when the light comes, it drives away the darkness. It brings warmth. It also melts the snow. So when Christians come into contact with the world, we would have a role in reducing the impact of sin. We should have a role to reduce the impact of sin. We should also help the world to be healed. Because when we lift out the Lord Jesus Christ and share his living message to people, then people will come to know God and they will give glory to our Heavenly Father. But how is the state of the world today? People think we are evolving into a higher form of culture. We are always very proud of ourselves. Well, it is true in a technological sense, from the as from the point, point, uh, uh, standpoint of science. But culture is developed also under the influence of Satan. If you need to tell one of the most important characteristics of culture, what is it? It's creating idols. I would say it's create idols. Of course, there are idols in many religions, but people have created movie stars, singing stars, football MVP, basketball MVP, and internet celebrity. Chinese called Mong Hong, and they are idols. We can also make work, our work to be our idol, and also make status beauty, health, success as idols. Consumerism and nationalism are also idols. So Satan will not ask you to worship him directly. If he appears in front of your eye, you'll be scared to death. Satan uses idols to make you think they meet your needs and they are your goals and make you worship it rather than our true God. So therefore, in 1 John 5, 21, the Apostle John reminds us, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. If you want to influence the world, sometimes we must be counterculture to resist idolatry. So how can you influence this influence occur? So I just, gave you four things here. How can you influence the world? First, you have to recognize the enemy. We must first have an insight into the gods in the public space. Nowadays, many idols exist around us. So don't let down your defense. So refrain from idol. Secondly, put on the full armor of a Christian, of the Christian soldier. You know what I'm talking about, right? Ephesians 6. And you have to, to equip yourself uh, by putting on the full armor of the Christian soldier. You have to continue, grow spiritually and read the word of God, love the word of God, and live it out. And thirdly, when you enter the world, you have to pre be prepared to suffer. You, have, you need to have a psychological preparation. You may be rejected. People may despise you, ridicule you, even attack you. Philippians 1.29, Paul says, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. So he said, isn't it too hard to influence the world? Well, that's why the last thing is very important. Watch and pray. You know, in any battle nowadays, 
even in the past, you know that communication system is most important. We have a hotline in the sky, in heaven, and we can bring in the most important armament by praying in the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have to watch always, very eager to pray. So if the sword is put in the soup, it will disappear. The effect will be there. Salt will make people thirst. Believers who are salt will make people thirsty in spirit. When the light is shining, it's being consumed, but people get to see and feel warm. Life will be changed. A few years ago, I heard the testimony of a young man. He started taking drugs around age of nine, very young. He couldn't read nor write in either Chinese or English. His parents were so worried for him. This is a young per person from in Toronto. Then someone introduced to his parents a Christian drug rehabilitation center in Taiwan. So, so this, uh, the parents sent this young, young, uh, young man to Taiwan to get help. It's not easy for him to change, but with the great help from the big brothers, those who were formerly drug addicts, he was able to get rid of his drug addiction. And more, more than, and more than that, he was called by God to serve him full time. So he came back to Toronto and study at our local seminary. He completed the a bachelor degree there uh, in biblical study. He also become he was able to write and speak fluent English. And one summer he went to Germany with his pastor for short-term missions, he was able to give testimony to over 100 college students. His testimony encouraged many people under drugs to decide to know Christ. So he was influenced by those who were formerly drug addicts and now become the soul and light of the world to influence others. So is it easy or difficult to become a Christian of salt and light? Answer me. Is it easy or is it difficult? Hmm? It's hard when you rely on yourself because there are a lot of objections. You are not welcome, but it's not difficult. When you rely on the Lord, they will welcome you. If you rely on the Lord and the power of the Spirit works through you, because being the soul of the light and, and light of the world is actually the natural outpouring of your life. Let's read this uh, verse together, okay? Matthew 6, 22, 23. Okay, let's read together. The eye is the lamb of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? This is a very important reminder and also warning from the Lord Jesus. Where does the essence of salt and light come from? It's not from us. It's from the Lord Jesus. Because he is Jesus, is the light of the world. When you meet him face to face daily, you will be enlightened. Your eyes will be healthy. It will be clear. NASB used the word clear. If you don't abide in the Lord, your eyes will be unhealthy. You have no light. NASB say bad. Your eyes are bad. And then it will affect your whole body. Your whole body will be full of darkness. So the secret is actually that we have to abide in the Lord. And then he will abide in us. Then you will have the light and power not to be a double-faced person, but to enter the world, enter the crowd to change people's lives. 
So to recap, my three points to you, God calls us to be different from the world. Secondly, God calls us to go to the world, enter the world. Thirdly, God called us to influence the world by the power of our Lord Jesus. Can you not be the soul and life of the world? Can you not be? I just don't want to be. No, you must do so. Failure to do so is failure to lift out your nature. You don't have a real life. You'll be wasting your life in God's grace. But when you let your light shine, first in your family, then your friends and neighbors, you can make a difference. The world will give glory to God through you. So the most important thing is that you just maintain a close relationship with the Lord. Then you will be the salt of the earth. You like to do be that? Lift that up? And you'll be the light of the world. Are you willing to do that? As God's blessing with others. Are you willing? Okay, let's pray. Let's all bow down and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for saving us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus, who is the light of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Apart from whom, we cannot come to you. Thank you for all the blessing you've given us through our Lord's redemption with his blood. O Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and shortcomings. Revive our souls. Set us apart in this dark world. Help us stay close to you. Enlighten our souls by your words daily. Fill us with your love and your power so that we can become the light and salt in the world and to be the blessings for our friends and relatives around us. Revive America. Help this nation to resume our vitality, to be a lampstand in the world for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Yes. It's, it's a. Yes. This, uh, is a, the, these words, the light and the salt, seem to be very familiar to us. A simple one, but it's so important that we need to be reminded. I'm so glad that just then we sing, count your blessings. Now we can see that when God calls us not just to receive blessings from him, but our duty is to give his blessings to others. Thank you for showing us so many back doors mm -hmm. that we can reach those hard to reach people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pastor Chang. Saying, uh, okay. thank you for reminding us that uh, we live in a pandemic of sins. Right. Every day, I struggle with two phases. One is good, and the other side is bad. Right. Uh, I'm being influenced uh, usually by majority at the best side, right? And gradually, slowly become like uh, normal, normal. It's like everyone doing it. Why I'm not doing that, right? So it's remind me that every word we speak, every step we make, our action show to the world whether we believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, because he's the way, he's the path. If we want to be the sword, the light of the world, every moment we live, we have to think of our Lord Jesus Christ, sac sacrifice for us uh, to save us uh, from the sins, right? So we have to be careful. We have to be remember him every moment, every step of the way we live for the day. 
Thank you, Dr. Sen. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to be very comfortable in serving each other in our small group of 30 people, 35 people, but it's, it's not comforting, not comfortable to walk out into the world and try to, try to, try to uh, show love to them. Yes. So we, we all need to do that. We tend to get lazy and just serve ourselves. And we need to around us many, many, especially young people that I, I really wish we could work harder to reach. Yes. Thank you. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dr. May, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Anybody who wants to talk needs to unmute themselves. We're going to go to the Holy Communion. Well, Dr. Sang, thank you for this very, very important servant, very timely, appropriate for our time. I'm so saddened to find out what happened to Rabbi Zacharias. I admire him. I read a lot of things he wrote and at his old age to turn out to be like this, this is really, really saddened me. But we need to pray for him so that he can return back to God so that God can use him again. For those of you that are not familiar with Rabbi Zagrai, he is a convert from India. His with the background of Hinduism and then some Catholic eventually became a Christian. So I have a couple of conversations with him because of background that um, the Hinduism and Buddhism are very similar. So he, he understands what I'm talking about. But um, it's almost shocking to me to find, find out what happened to him, that he turned out to be like this. But uh, somewhere along, fame, reputations, and wealth got hold of him and succumbed to the temptations. But still, we need to hold him up and pray for him. There's a lot of leaders in the prime because of the success. They've fallen into the trap of Satan. So there's still hope for them to come back. So we need to pray for them. So for us to, that's one of my biggest problems is I like to stay inside the salt shaker. I'm not comfortable to be shaking and get out of the salt shaker to, to, to disappear into the soup or the meat. It's very, very uncomfortable for me. So that's something I'm still struggling to learn. So that needs encouragement from each other to get out of the salt shaker and to stand on the land stand. That is scary. So if you want to be this, the salt and the light, we need to encourage each other. It's a difficult thing to do. I grew up in a Catholic church with a big emblem in my chest pocket, in my blazer. It's it's in, it's in Latin, but the word is let your light shine. So I've been wearing that jacket with that emblem ever since I was third grade. But I didn't understand what that mean. It's just something I can go and get a cheap movie. I can go to a movie theater wearing that shirt and get half price. I can go to this a lot of supermarket and buy things, get half price. That's all I understood, the significance of that batch. But then 
kind of what the message means. Let your light shine. So we will be able to do that when we encourage each other. We push a little bit each other to do that. Get out of the saw shake, stem on the land stand. It's a scary thought, but we need to do that. So thank you for your wonderful message. Mm -hmm. So for the Holy Communion, let's prepare our heart, give thanks to our Lord. So the, the Bible verses for us, communion is first is from Matthew chapter six, verse 10. Everybody's familiar. It's a prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The second verse, the Bible verses came from Galatians chapter five, verse 22 to 24. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. And now stays from Philippians chapter four, verse 20. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray for the breath. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Please, Lord, open our eyes to be able to see in this jungle, in this jumble of the circumstances of this week, the outline of your eternal purpose for us individually and as a church. The cross of Jesus Christ brings in the focus for us, your love, your purpose in our life, and your plan of salvation for human race. In the breaking of the bread here this morning, in remembrance of Christ's body broken for us, remind us once again of the patience of your sacrificial love and the power of your resurrections. Cultivating us the fruit of patience and gentleness as evidence of your indwelling spirit as we walk with you to change us and the world around us. And all things must better reflect your purpose and declare your glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. In his mighty name, we pray in Luke chapter 22, verse 19, Jesus said, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take your breath. So let's pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we are being changed day by day. O oh God, our maker and redeemer, to the dead and resurrections of our Lord Jesus Christ, which bring us the forgiveness of our sin. Because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, we are raised to walk in newness of life, the eternal life. As we share this cup of the new covenant on your table here this morning, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit that we might have the inward assurance that we are yours, your sons and your daughter. By your power and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit enable us to manifest some external tangible evidence that we are indeed become a new creature in Jesus Christ so that we can go out into the world be the salt and light of the world. Dear Lord, continue the work of salvation that you have begun in us and seal, seal us to completions on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mighty name, we pray it.
So in Luke chapter 22, verse 27, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, the cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us drink this cup. So as we take the bread and drink the cup this morning, that's a reminder of what the preacher just said. We need to be we are renewed as new creature. Therefore, we need to go out to be salt and the light of the world. So thank you. Let's sing the talks of doxology. Again. Yes. <laughs> Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Pastor Michael, for coming back to see us. To so come back to see us soon. We need this kind of preaching, this kind of reminder often. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So we say hi to your son. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. He's doing fine. Yeah. 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 Pastor, yeah. yeah. Pastor Zhang's son is a violin teacher. Very nice young man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your encouragement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, Dr. Son, uh, Rari Sekarai passed away already. He oh, passed wow. away in the February this year. Oh, yeah. Too late to pray for him. Oh, yeah, sorry to <laughs> know that. <laughs> the repent has to be early. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. now, we'll pray for his wife and his uh, association. Yeah. Yes. His family. Uh, Okay, nice to see all of you. Nice to see you. God bless you. Uh, God bless you too. Take care. Okay. Thank and you, Pastor Chen. Thank you. Day. <laughs> Enjoy the fireworks today. <laughs> Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll take a 10 minutes break and come back yeah. to finish up the. Four. After twice we tried, we didn't touch verse one, so we're going to try to finish it today. Yeah. Chapter four. So take a break. We'll see you soon.